You're listening to part two. Implement these speaker tips while you speak. Let's continue with tip number 25 through 36. Number 25. You know, mention a few times throughout your presentation that you have a giveaway and that folks should give you their business card or fill out their name and email and phone number on your name sheet on a clipboard that they're passing around. You know, just pass it around, and maybe it's a bowl. <laughs> yeah, there you go. You know, bring a Tupperware bowl with you to your speech. Hey, I'm passing out the bowl. But everybody can feel excited about getting something. You know, they're there, they're listening. Maybe they're getting a little bored, a little tired. Hey, real quick, I want to just pass around this clipboard. Put your name on the list if you want to enroll and maybe win something. I'm giving away three prizes at the end, and hey, it's really exciting. But, you know... If it's a really large audience, just have people meet you in the back of the room later after your speech to give you their card or their email. Hey, I know this is a really big auditorium that I'm speaking in, so I'm going to be giving away three free books and two of this and one of that and one of them. And if you want to participate in that giveaway, meet me after my speech in the hallway on a break. And uh, I'll have a name and clipboard there, and you can just enter your name there, and then I'll be texting the three people who win this and that person who wins that. And, and hey, I look forward to meeting you too. Number 26, stop your speech at certain points to ask your audience if they have any questions. Check in with them. Does, hey, anyone have any questions before I move on to the next topic? At least ask and make notes of them, even if you don't have time to answer them at that moment. You can quickly run through those questions at the end of your presentation. Because if people have a question at the beginning or, you know, five minutes in, 10 minutes in, 20, whatever, you would do them a big favor um, by relieving their their anxiety of wanting to ask you a question. God, I have a question. I really want to ask them this question. By the way, uh, does anybody have any questions? What are they? I'm going to accumulate them and answer them all at the end of the presentation. So, yeah, your question is, and yours, and yours, and yours. Okay, good. All right, I just made a note of that. And if, of course, if I missed your question, just I'll be able to ask you again. All right, great. Okay, good. All right, to move on with my topic, let's go. Number 27, don't embarrass anyone in the audience. By calling someone out to share their story, only for you to say something negative or demeaning. Now, I know this isn't you. You don't do this, right? But we've heard speakers do this. Again, don't let that be you. Be kind, be respectful, and uplifting. In fact, if you heard a really good story, but you know it's kind of personal to that person, you don't even have to mention that you talked to somebody at the event before your speech. You could put a time label on it that says, you know, last week I ran into somebody who had a particular situation with their life. And to protect their identity and all that kind of stuff, I spoke to them last week when I was, you know, whatever, just make some lie up. It's a white lie. It's okay. But, you know, don't, I've seen people do that and, you know, speakers, and it's not good. Don't embarrass anyone in the audience by calling them out. Or saying, yeah, can you tell me about... No, just just be real delicate about that. Okay, good. Number 28. Don't just sell, pitch, and talk about what it is that you're selling. Educate, inform, entertain, train, and give your audience real value. Remember, 80% training and education, 10% answering questions, and 10% selling making your offer, and closing folks on what it is that you have to sell, providing that you're selling something. Otherwise, hey, it's a simple, thank you for having me. I hope you learned a lot. I'll be in the back of the room if you have any questions or would like to ask me about my books and stuff. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The thing about selling from stage is really a simple situation of leaving your audience wanting more. In other words, I'm giving you tips, but I'm going to sell details. I'm going to tell you what's possible, how, and what this can do to change your life or this or that or whatever. If you want to know the implementation steps, the details, that's for sale. Otherwise, 
I explained this and that, and I entertained you, and I informed you, and I educated you, and I trained you, but I've run out of time. I wish I had more time to tell you more. That's in the package that I'm selling. And people are either cut and dry, black and white. Whoa, I was blown away. I love the talk. I want more. Here's my wallet. Here's my credit card. Or if it doesn't apply, then those people just leave. They walk away. Or, you know, talk to them before they leave. Say thank you for hearing you out. Mm. To me, that's how selling is done from the stage. 80% training and education. 10% answering questions, of which those questions can be geared into, you know, that's a really great question. The answer to that is, and I even go into that in more detail in my program that I have a special sale for today. And selling is another aspect of during, but it's also a closing thing too. So we'll get into that later. Okay, 29, number 29, repeat something you said if it bears repeating. There's value in repeating content a second time to impress, make a point or highlight. It's a good idea. Hey, just real quick, I'm going to repeat what I just said because I think it's important that you guys really take this concept home. And that is, and I'm going to repeat it right now. Number 30, look around the room as you speak. Is anyone nodding off, falling asleep, yawning, or looking bored? Hey, maybe it's a great time to change your speaking tone, your volume, or say something aloud and exciting. Perhaps get people to stand up again, shake it out, and prepare them for the next phase of your speech. Maybe you got another hour or two to go, and again, it's right after lunch, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock. Ooh, that's like the twilight zone, the Bermuda Triangle of keeping people awake. (laughs) Number 31. Go over all the main points you spoke on. Make sure everyone understands and absorbs what you talked about to reinforce the learning. Ask if anyone has any questions. Number 32. At the end, offer to visit with people after your talk and that you're available for questions. Hey, I just want to make a quick note. I think we're getting into some really hot topics here and I'm getting kind of excited. I'm going to keep going, but... If anybody wants to meet with me afterwards, I'll be available over there in that corner by my table or in the hallway just down on the left or wherever you're going to be. But by making people know that you'll be available to speak to them after the event because you're saying it during the event, during the event, the whole time they're saying to themselves, oh, I have another question. Oh, I can't wait to see him. Oh, I can't wait to talk to her. Well, I can't wait to shake their hand and, and say thank you and just maybe sign up for their services. I'm going to do that. I'm going to remember. They said I could go and see them after the, sh- the speech, and they're looking forward to it. So am I. Number 33. Mention, if you like this presentation and you'd like me to give this talk to your audience, whether it's live in person, over the phone, via teleseminar, or online, via webinar, or Zoom, hey, I'd be glad to do it. So talk to me afterwards, and we'll discuss how to make that happen. And again, you're doing that during your speech, because it's during the speech that maybe you hit this really hot button, and the audience just woke up, and they're like, oh, oh, and they're like, wow. And then just before you continue, or you're at a break point, you just switch gears to a new topic, you might just pause and say, hey, by the way, if you like what you just heard, if you want me to talk to your audience, if any of you have audiences with your company or where you're from, your organization or group, contact me afterwards and we'll talk. I'd love to speak to your group too. Number 34, don't answer unplanned questions from the audience only to be distracted and off on a tangent, thereby extending the duration of your speech to run out of time. And you can't finish on that high note that you were planning to because that unplanned question kind of just came out of nowhere. Save such questions for after your presentation when you can spend more time in the back of the room answering those questions. It shows that you are approachable, like, hey, that is a really great question, but that might, I think that answer is kind of long. What I want to say to you, hold that note, just hold that thought, and we'll talk about that after the show, after my presentation. You know, it shows, you know, interest in their feedback, And that's a plus. 
And then they say, you know what? He addressed my concern. I needed to ask that question. I'm going to respect his or her time on stage. And I'm going to get some time with them after the presentation's over. Yeah, it's good. It's really good. Number 35, finish on time. Don't get cut off by the bell and don't rush your presentation so you finish before your time is up. Uh -uh, No. In fact, I gave you an example where my time got cut at the 20-minute mark. The bell went off. Fortunately, I was pretty on fire and the audience loved it. And my host loved it. And she wasn't pressured that I had to let another speaker go after me because those speakers had gone before me. And I think they too were liking my speech. So I pretty much had the floor. But that isn't always the case. Finish on time. Don't get cut off by the bell. And you can't finish on that high note. And that's what I need to say to you. I will see you after my speech. I look forward to meeting you. Thank you. And that leads me to number 36, end strong. Wrap up your key points, emphasizing points you think folks should remember most and take home with them. End on a high note by leaving them with a quote, a call to action step, some homework to do. Hey, if anybody wants to give me a review or testimonial or share their thoughts and feedback about my presentation, I'll be over there. Anybody have any questions about the speech I gave or about some of the books that I have available in the back? I'll be over there. But hey, I want to tell you all right now, I really enjoyed this time with you. I think we all got a lot out of it. I know I did, and I hope you did too. Rock and roll. And that concludes those things to do, those speaker success tactics, while you're speaking and giving your presentation. Up next, part three, implementing certain speaker success tips after you give your presentation, after you speak. Come on, let's get into that right now. Good stuff right up ahead.